Welcome, Sachin. Uh, so, question, first question. Uh, what is Flipkart into? What business is Flipkart into? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. yeah. So, I think we are in a very simple business. Uh, we are in the business of making uh, shopping easy for people, um, and uh, there are many ways to do it. We follow one way of going about doing that, and that's what uh, we are. We are basically in the business of making shopping easy and delightful for people. So, uh, what is the IP that Flipkart has built, you know, over the last few years? So I think our unique uh, point has been since the beginning, and I talked about it last four years back when I was here, and uh, today as well, it remains the same, which is customer focus, um, our ability to understand customers' needs, our ability to execute and, uh, and serve those needs. I think that has been the focus uh, and USP since we started. Um, and, they'll, and we kind of are a little bit different from uh, from other companies um, at that time and today as well from the point of view that we, we don't stop ourselves at a certain stage and say that this is where our boundary is and beyond that we cannot do much. We kind of push the boundaries. We make sure we, we, don't, we don't say that, okay, logistics ecosystem is bad in India. We'll just let it be and, and um, go along and while we take that problem in our own hand and solve that. Uh, similar with other things, whether it's data center hosting, warehouse management, uh, whether it's uh, um, technology talent, kind of technologies that are available in India. We don't really uh, limit ourselves to constraints of the environment. We push them a lot. So that has been the, that has been the USP. So Flipkart has obviously been one of one of the most talked about, most one of the most followed startup in in India. Uh, so from 2009 to you know 2013, um, just trying to understand you know how has the company evolved in terms of team structure, you know in terms of uh, you know are the early employees have they able to have they managed to scale up along with the company or you know how has it been? Yeah, I think. Um we have restructured multiple times. Our growth has been crazy, um, from varying between uh, somewhere between I think four to five x CAGR over last four or five years. Now, with that growth comes a lot of new needs that the company has. Um, a role that was, um, for example, we used to have one supply chain head earlier. Now we have split that function into three four parts and now we have three people heading those functions. Now we need to continuously keep evolving that I think and it's not a it's, it's a never ending process. Restructuring teams, uh, how you think about uh, what kind of people you need, it's a continuously changing process and no company is kind of stable from that point of view. If you look at Apple every year or so they have a lot of reshuffle. Um, and they are a massive company, one of the largest companies in the world, right? So, so it's it's a never-ending process. I think uh, you need to continuously evolve with your needs. Um, most of our uh, employees who joined early, they have they have been able to scale up. They have taken up larger and larger responsibilities. In some cases, they have taken the largest responsibilities that they started out with. In some cases, there are other people who have come and uh, above them, and that's uh, I think a, that's a natural process, and people understand that. So in terms of you know founders assuming different roles, you know how has it how has that been? You know, uh, so uh, do you still code? <laughs> um, I would like to, and um, uh, and I have been told uh, only yesterday that some of my code is still running, which I wrote like three years back. Uh, that was the last time that I coded, um, and uh, although I have been involved in design discussions, product dis discussions, and all that, but not really coded. But I think uh, from a role point of view, from we being a two-people company where we were coding and packing and delivering products and doing vendor negotiations to um, uh, getting our office cleaned and everything to 
um, where we are today. I think it has been a lot of changes. Um, for first couple of years, we were like, we didn't really have a CEO, CEO kind of distinction. Um, and uh, that is uh, when we went to our investors and they asked us, who is the CEO? And then we looked at each other and said, OK, we don't know who the CEO is. Let us uh, answer that question to you in the next meeting. So got together and then decided, OK, you be the CEO, you be the CEO, and things like that. So that's how we uh, did that. Uh, but it was very ad hoc. Today, we are much more structured. We are looking at what competencies are required in which role. Now the roles have become pretty specific in their needs um, as well. And we have, we have, um, we have now more, we are no, not much more structured from how we divide responsibilities and what kind of capabilities we need to build and we continuously work on that. So, uh, so I mean, talking about Flipkart, you know, I mean, you had your biggest pivot which was from an inventory-led model to marketplace, right? So, so what you know, you started off with a certain hypothesis. You know, you guys built around that, and then the pivot happened, right? So, so if you could walk us through that. So, I would not say it's a pivot. Uh, it's more of an evolution um, from uh, rather than a pivot. From uh, so this this thought process kind of started. Actually, this has been in our back of the mind since a long time ago because marketplace, we have very, while we were growing since 2007, we were seeing China and we were seeing US, seeing how marketplaces are doing. And uh, for example, we, look, we looked at um, um, South America. Now that place is almost 100% marketplace. Now that was always in the back of the mind. While we did believe that controlling the user end to end, uh, user experience end to end uh, uh, is required to shape the sector, to build that, get that momentum going from a customer point of view. Uh, we always kind of had the back, at the back of the mind that we will, at some point of time, start getting uh, sellers on board, start making it, um, start making it more of a market driven process than we driving it. So I think we kind of got the ball rolling with our initial model and now we are getting more sellers on board, largely because the although the from a customer experience point of view the earlier model was like way uh, years ahead of everybody else um, but from a selection point of view or the range of products that you can provide it's it has limits so, um, so that's the kind of that is the problem that we are solving uh, in this model so how are you going to control that experience so we are bringing in we are, that's why i said it's not really a pivot it's an evolution because we are bringing all our experience that we have the last five years of operations, and we're bringing all of that into this. Um, we know exactly what the customer needs, what are the metrics we need to track, how do we track them, how do we make sellers get to those metrics, what they need to do, um, while there have been marketplaces in India in the past, but they have not really been able to help sellers get there. Um, while Because we have done it ourselves, we know what it takes to get there, and we are kind of uh, using all of our experience. Again, I'm being very vague here, I know, but, but I think from a, um, but these are the kind of things that you will start seeing in the future. Will we use all of our experience, all of the capabilities that we have developed to help uh, grow the seller ecosystem? So, I mean, uh, uh, if you could share some of that, you know, uh, for example, say you, uh, I mean, I think Friday itself, this was announced that you guys are not shipping to UP, you know, <laughs> anything more than 10,000, right? So, so what has been, you know, uh, the trigger point behind these decisions? So, uh, I think UP is a specific case. Uh, it's not just UP, it's a, it's a um, multiple states, it's not just, um, um, I think, so our philosophy generally has been since the start that mm -hmm. if we cannot provide a great experience to every customer in that location or that we are serving, we will not serve them. We will probably not, we will take it back. Now, now I'll put it along with the, with the recent also change that we did, which is we pulled out of large electronic items. Now, that's a, now that is also, we, we launched it uh, about six months back. Um, now, if we were not able to find a way to provide a great experience to the customers. If the experience is not great, if it's not delightful, we will not do it. 
So that has been the thought process. And, and until that happens, um, and these are, I think, these are temporary step backs. And sometimes you have to, before you have to take three steps forward, you have to take one step back. And this is kind of one of those things. And it's a very temporary thing. I think uh, it's a, uh, basically about getting the customer experience right and then um, um, getting into it and then really getting into it big time. Now that's what our thought process is. So, uh, so any uh, takeaways that you, know, you could suggest to other entrepreneurs? You know, because uh, I mean, the point that you're making is uh, focus on the experience and then kind of uh, you know, promise the experience to a wider segment, right? So any, any takeaway that you could share with the audience, you know, any experience of uh, yeah, I think I think the uh, fundamental thought process again. Sometimes, as product people or uh, as business people, sometimes we kind of start falling into the trap of the that the 80-20 rule, right? That if it's 80% there, then it's uh, good enough, right? Uh, that 20% of the effort gives you 80% of the benefit. Now, now you cannot do 80-20 in everything that you do. Uh, uh, there are few things as a company which has to be really core which cannot be 80 20 which has to be 100 right so that's that's i think that is very important for any startup any company that one thing has to be 100 and you cannot really um, compromise on that and that for us is customer delight if we cannot give a delightful experience to the customer we will not do it at all now that's our thought process um, and i think that's that's if there is any learning from all of this that flipkart is doing but that's that's the learning that some things cannot be 80 20 uh, talking about flight, you know, what really happened to flight? You know, it was it kind of changed the whole game. You know, because uh, I mean, at least from what I noticed, was a lot of my friends were downloading. You know, a lot of people like us were looking for something. You know, for a good experience, right? So, so the sudden decision to shut it down. You know, what was the you know data point around uh, digital music? Uh, as a download versus CD? Yeah, I think, uh, so one is that it didn't really happen. I mean, I would, uh, um, it didn't happen to the extent that we expected it to. Um, if we got into it and we would have stayed into it if there was a potential of a massive business in it, and that's what we are here for, we are not for small, creating small segments inside the business. So if it's, this, if it's not a big opportunity, we'll not go after it. That was the thought process. And it kind of got prove, proven because of certain metrics that we saw that it's not going to be a large business. It's going to stay a very small niche business uh, in India. And it's not, I'm not talking about, and the, and the shutting down of flight is not, uh, is not something that you can extrapolate and say that music will not, digital music will not happen in India. I think digital music will happen in India. It's paper download, digital music on Flipkart, that didn't happen, right? So that's the, uh, that is basically what did not happen. So, so, the, so I'll show you a, a very telling metric, uh, which is, uh, which is, was kind of staring right at uh, us is, so we, we sell music CDs and we sell MP3 downloads. Um, our music CD section gets one-sixth of the traffic of the mp3 download section and the music cd revenue is three times that of mp3 downloads so it's 18 times more conversion 18 times more pull as compared to mp3 downloads and that was a that was a that's a basically a metric which is customers are just voting against this model so uh, essentially what you're saying is, so, so do you think flight was ahead of its time or do you think you needed, I mean, this is more of a startup, you know? No, I, no I, think, I think our, our philosophy has been fail fast. Um, and if we would, but if we would have thought that flight was just ahead of its time and it just takes more, needs more time, we would have stayed in it. Kind of we are, came to a conclusion that it won't happen ever kind of conclusion. I think that's, that was the, that was a thought process behind that. Uh, we concluded basically that. So, uh, so from from what I could gather, you know, essentially something like this could be a startup business plan, but not a Flipkart business plan because you are looking for an ambition, you know, which is probably too high. You know, when you started Flipkart, obviously the e-commerce segment was not there, right? So, so that ambition was there, and you guys kind of 
did it, right? Uh, with flight, maybe it's a startup business plan, maybe not a Flipkart business plan, because within a company, you were probably looking for a, you know, a bigger revenue stream from that. But that, that depends on how you look at a startup business plan. What is a startup business plan? A startup does not really need to, it's not built to remain small. Yeah. It has to become a big company at some point of time, and it has to attract investors, it, had to, it has to probably go an IPO or uh, get acquired or whatever has to happen with it, right? And for that, it needs to really become a big business. If uh, from that, from those parameters, I don't think this is a startup business plan also, <laughs> uh, from those parameters. Uh, what's your vision for Flipkart? Yeah, so I think uh, our, as I said, right, our purpose is to make shopping delightful. And we believe this is something that's a never-ending process. We will, uh, there will always be room of Im for improvement. There will always be people who would not be touched by us. There's massive market out there. India is a country of a billion plus population. And, and I think that's what, uh, that's what the market size is for us. Uh, I think it's a 100-year purpose for us, going after that, uh, um, uh, that purpose of cre making shopping delightful, making shopping easy for customers, not um, uh, making it a painful pr or, or, or removing the pain that is there today in that. So I think that's the overall purpose. But from a vision point of view, I think we, are, um, we, want, to be, we want to be one of the, we want to be one of the largest one of the largest country, companies in India. And, uh, and when we do that, we will also be one of the largest companies in the world. So that's our vision, that we want to be there. We, uh, um, we are not in this to make a small, profitable company. We, we believe that we can be one of the largest companies of the future coming out of India. And, uh, um, and that's, what we are, that's what we are doing. Um, easiest question. How do you think Amazon will survive in India? <laughs> Yo, I, so I think, um, so I think, like, uh, I believe that our fate or our success and failure is in our hands. Anybody's success and failure is in their hands. It's not in I. I, I don't. It's not in my hands. It's a lot in uh, uh, their hands. But uh, so I, I think I can tell you from a Flipkart point of view, we kind of don't um, never, we have never uh, looked at competition um, as kind of a, a, a competition as a way of making decisions from a day to day basis. Yes, do, we do factor in competition when we make strategy, yes. I think from a strategic point of view, competition is very important. And as uh, people who would have done MBAs or uh, would know, uh, it's taught in college as well that competition is largely, uh, sorry, strategy is largely about competition. It's, um, uh, and I think from a strategy point of view, we have factored in most competition um, that we will ta uh, get. And, um, and we believe that as long as Flipkart uh, keeps setting or keeps uh, 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 setting the rules of the game in the e-commerce space, we will stay ahead. As long as we make sure that everybody else has to do what we are doing, uh, not the other way around, uh, we, are, we are going to stay ahead. And that's what our focus is. So uh, what are the key? things that you guys are developing over the next you know, few years? I mean, if you could share some of them. If yeah, you could. I, 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 OK. Um, so I think um, focus areas for the next one year or so are, again, I, we have talked about this multiple times. And, and it's obvious from the way we are. I mean, you just go to the website and you can see that is uh, our uh, fashion categories are pretty big focus areas for us. We want to win that category this year. Um, and uh, marketplace is a big focus area for us. We uh, believe it's in very early stage. Sellers need a lot of help. Seller ecosystem, although has been there for the last 10 years, but it's not really there from a customer expectation point of view. So a lot of work uh, is going to happen on that area as well. So I think, I think largely that's the focus area for next one year or, or so for us. So uh, you guys have raised multiple round, rounds, right? So uh, given that, you know, 80% of uh, crowd here is early stage. Uh, what would you, you know, 
advise them to you know watch out for some of the big stuff when you are raising money yeah i think uh, again uh, no it's it's nice to say that but i'm going to say but it's difficult to follow uh, is that get partners which align with your thought process now when you have money coming your way and and saying no to that will become very very difficult uh, at that point of time because of this thing but it's very important in the long term in the short term it may seem that it's a small thing and um, and things will get sorted out but in the long term uh, and if you're building business for the long term it will matter a lot align getting <laughs> partners getting don't think of them just just money they are your partners and in the long term their thought process or um, their motivations or their pulls and pushes will mat will impact your business as well so it's important to get the right partners i think we have been very very lucky from that point of view we've got the right partners who were very aligned from the very beginning with what we were doing um, and uh, from a strategy point of view there was no there was never a misalignment uh so i think uh, strategic alignment with the investor is very important they should have similar motivations or similar thoughts about your business um, as you have i think that's very important if you're not building for the long term then i think it's okay it's it probably won't matter much so uh so if you ha you know you guys started in 2008 right 2007 yeah so if you had to change let's say you know very hypothetical question but you know you have pushed the envelope for a lot of things right so if you had to change some of the decision some of the strategy you know in the, which you have taken in the past what would what would it be <laughs> massive number of things um i think uh, a lot of things uh, we would have done differently um had uh, we been smarter <laughs> uh but uh, i think uh, i think flight is a example of this uh again we knew what the problems were but we were very confident that we will be able to overcome those issues uh, but we didn't we couldn't uh now, now those are the kind of things that you will know only when you try i think uh, there is no other way to do uh, do i regret trying something i don't think so because at that point of time whatever information we had or whatever thought process we had i think we did the right things uh from that point of view um in the hindsight 80% of our decisions were right 20% wrong and that's that's what business is about it's not if you if anybody could say i can make 100% right decisions then it's then they're fooling themselves i think uh, it's it's just not possible so yeah um you know you guys are basically i mean flipkart has been kind of setting standards in terms of you know delivery logistics but a lot of that has also become a commodity business right so how are you kind of uh, trying to build more ip around the business right yeah yeah i think uh, uh logist again uh, i think you're right that uh, the st standards that we set in some of these areas uh people are now getting close to that now the challenge is for us to is to push the bar to the next level and make it more difficult i think that's what we will keep doing uh uh that and we are in the best the 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 best part is that we are in the in the best position to to do that to change the game again to take it to the next level and that's what we are working on continuously and uh, um everybody in flipkart is focused on taking everything that we are doing to the next level um and and i think i think that's the way to uh, compete in the market yeah uh is it going to be a one you know the last man standing game or <laughs> you know, because from what it seems like if you look at the number of acquisitions shutdowns in the last one year it has been phenomenal right so is is it going to be the last man standing or the last couple of men standing um it's hard to say that today i think we are still very far because it's not that market potential is x and we have reached x by 2 uh, or e-commerce has reached x by 2 of its uh, market potential but that's not the case uh, we are very far from the market potential i think when we grow number of things will happen um, and uh, and i think it's uh, it's very early to say what can kind of things will happen from a uh, what kind of players will come in and what they will do and how that will 
shape up. I think we'll have to just wait and watch and execute. Cool. Uh, thanks, Sachin. Thanks for coming over. Thank you. You know, being unplugged.